Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna give you my five top tips for using the Hercules DJ controller Impulse 500. And as you can see here, I've actually got the gold edition. I will be giving these away free on my Instagram account. So make sure you go and follow me at Phil Harris Music for a chance to actually win these. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. I'm gonna give you my five top tips. Okay guys, so tip number one is the beat jump feature on these DJ decks. To get to the beat jump feature, you've got to hit shift and slice mode like this. And you'll see it shift to this mode here where there's two red buttons and then yellow buttons on the inside. Okay, like this. Now, what is the beat jump feature? Beat jump aligns, uh, basically what it allows you to do is jump forward or back a certain amount of beats in a song. You can do this live, but I actually use this more for preparing my DJ sets. It aligns with this feature on Serato, you can see on my screen here. As you can see, you can select 32 beats, which is eight bars. I always uh, suggest having it on 32, which is eight bars, and you can jump back and forth. You see the white thing up here move back and forth as I jump back and forth. And same thing if I came to my DJ decks and clicked it, you can see it jumping back and forth. Now, why is this my top tip with these decks? Well, I like to, in a lot of my DJ sets, do um, drop swaps. That's actually one of my main transitions. So as one song is building to a drop, at the drop, I'm swapping it for another drop of another song. But the way I do this is I go to the drop of each song, and then I go back eight or 16 bars and I press play on the track I'm bringing in there. That gives me eight or 16 bars to remove the one track as I bring the other track in and then boom, the drop from track B plays instead of the drop of track A. Now, I've got loads of videos on drop swaps if you go to my channel and check it out. But why is this useful here? Well, say I'm gonna do a drop swap on this, these two tracks here. If you look at my screen, what I do is I'll go to the drop of both tracks. So here's the one drop. I go to the drop of the other track, which is there. And to line this up, a quick way to do it is I just go to shift slicer mode to this beat jump mode here, click back once like that. And then what I can do, or back once or twice, I could go back twice if I wanted to. I typically go back about eight bars. And I can go to hop cue here and set two hop cue points. Uh, I'm just gonna set two random ones here, there and there. And it just means now I can see on my screen, there's a blue marker here and an orange marker here. Now, if I was playing this track here and I came to this blue marker, I hit play on this orange button here and that would bring that track in. So they're both aligned, ready for a drop stop. Why do I tell you about this though? I find it really quick and convenient for going through my sets, pre-planning them and setting all the cue points I need. Um, so that's a really cool tip for you. The second tip I would give you about these DJ decks is to just use the load buttons when you've got your DJ set ready. So you might go and you might create a DJ set like I've got here, and you know the order that you're gonna be playing them and, and performing, and to get really quick at moving from one track to the next, because in DJ sets, especially if you're like me, and you like to mash up a lot of songs quickly, you need to quickly get between songs. Now, believe it or not, you might find reaching over to your computer and scrolling and dragging and dropping is quick. But as long as you've got your playlist structured nicely, it's way easier to just go up, load, down, load. It takes two seconds to just bring it down one and then click load into that deck or down and load into that deck, which is really awesome. And if you're really clever about this, you can actually have it play from your first cue point as well. Um, if you have it set up like that in Serato. Um, so when you hit load, it instantly starts playing. I rarely find myself doing this because often you need to juggle beat uh, speeds, but this is so much quicker. So I would recommend you get used to scrolling up and down your playlist with this button here and clicking the load button there. Okay, so tip number three is about the filters. Now, as we know, if we don't have any filters selected here, and we just turn the filter knob, it has the typical filtering effect. Like that. However, as soon as you hit any of these buttons here, this filter knob will affect these buttons here. 
Now, some people love this, some people hate it. I quite like it, um, but I do find there are times where I might be doing a regular filter on this deck over here, and I want to add a filter onto this deck over here, and I find it a bit troublesome having to wait until I've stopped using that feature before I use this. However, the best way I have these set up, and perhaps you could do this in the same way as me, if you find your DJ style similar, is I go to effects, and on both decks, I have the first effect as clean echo out. Okay, so you can see here, clean echo out. I have the second effect for reverb, and I have the third effect for tremolo or any unusual feature I would typically use. Clean echo out is my most used effect, which is why I always like to have it at hand. I know I can slam that on, boom, and that song's gone. Let me give you a super quick example of this. this, this, this. such an awesome way to get rid of any track. So it's there loaded and F effects won every single time. The second effect I have is reverb. I always find this a good one, especially if I'm using any kind of acapellas and I wanna add a bit of reverb and space to them. And I always like to have it there. So I put that on effect two. Perfect. And then the third effect, Go and find one that you find quirky and interesting that you could throw in. I really like this one, Tremolo, as you can see here. What Tremolo does is it has this kind of jittery effect, which I find comes in, comes in quite handy, especially, again, if you're working with acapellas. See how cool that is? And when you're playing it over another track, how effective that could be. In a nutshell, though, I would always have Clean Echo Out on Effect 1, a reverb on effect two, and then some sort of wacky effect that you enjoy just throwing over a song on effect three and keeping them there. So you get used to them being in the same place and just always using the same ones. Um, so that's actually my main tip to you. Take your three top used effects and leave them there on both decks so you always know where you're at with both of them. The fourth tip I'm gonna give you on these DJ decks is actually something I would avoid. So as you know, on these DJ decks, every time the uh, one of the bar comes, this flashes red and then flashes blue the rest of the time. So it's one in red, two, three, four in blue. Have a watch. <laughs> Now, even though that's a cool feature, I would never rely on that if I was you. I would get very good at understanding and hearing phrases of songs over staring at that, okay? That doesn't really help a huge amount. You'd be much better at being able to hear and understand phrasing. If you wanna understand phrasing better, you can just go and search Phil Harris phrasing. I've got a video on my YouTube channel. Or if you'd actually like full lessons where I take you through everything you need to know about DJing in a really structured way, you can go and visit beginnerdjlessons.com where I've got a course that'll teach you every single thing you need to know and you'll get there so much quicker than searching through YouTube. Okay, cool. So look, I'm going to give you a super quick example of me listening out for a phrase and bringing in. A phrase is a new section of a song where something changes. So I'm going to do, the, the, do this one example. And if you're like, how did you know that was a phrase? You can go and look at my other videos. So as you can see there, that was very easy. And because I wasn't really watching this at all, I was just listening out for the phrasing of the song. Okay guys, so my fifth and final tip for you is to use the crossfader to get effects on your music. So we all see James Hype doing this kind of thing with his cross, with his um, volume sliders. I'm here to tell you, I think it's way easier for you to use your crossfader. First thing you need to do is make sure this little setting is directly in the middle. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get a bit of an acapella where there's just a solid tone. So there's a bit where Rihanna, I've got this vocal here, We Found Love with Rihanna in it. And it's got this bit where she just sings this solid note. Come 
I'm going to loop that note. So it's just a solid continuation of a note like this. You see how it's just looping that note over and over. Now, if I wanted to get it tighter, I can actually just make, if I, you know, if it wasn't a solid note, I could actually make the loop tighter to get a solid note, but it sounds more robotic and less natural, which is fine. This is electronic music. I'll show you that anyway, watch. But since she's singing one note anyway, I'm gonna leave it as a bit of a wider note like this. Now, we'll see James Hype doing a lot of this kind of stuff. Now, I find that so much harder because the thing with these uh, these uh, volume sliders here is the volume gradually gets louder and gradually gets lower, which means you have to bring the volume quite low down to get this choppy sound. If you use the crossfader on the middle, you can literally tap it in by the smallest amount and it cuts it in and out. To do this, I could just put my finger here and just tap it in, listen. It's so much easier, especially if you actually get good with the crossfader, you can come up with these really cool patterns. So I would recommend getting quite good at the crossfader as opposed to the volume sliders in order to get these chops. So for example, now if I went to a drop of a song, uh, let's go here, I can now tap out a really cool kind of rhythm using this tone here. Have a listen, I'm just gonna go back a little bit. Now, if you weren't very good at this, you could just put another finger there and tap like that, which will kind of have the same effect. If you're not very good with applying the pressure with your thumb, another way to do it is just put a finger there and just tap it. It would have exactly the same effect. So there you go, guys. There's my five tips with these DJ decks. Really hope they help you out. I'm going to leave a link directly below this video to all my DJ courses in case you do want to get better at any of these aspects I've talked about. And I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Ciao.